Hi, I'm Peter Prevos, and welcome to the sixth video in the series on Emacs Writing Studio, or EWS. So EWS is a configuration and an associated book and website and, and this video series about how to write books and articles and do research and so on with Emacs. This video explains the production process for writing prose in Emacs, which is chapter seven in the book. In the production phase, we prepare the document for publication. So this is not about the actual writing in org mode. There are lots of other videos on the internet that you can watch. But this is about some tools, how to manage the writing process. The EWS book is written and published with the EWS configuration. So I'm going to use it, a chapter of this book as a demo. So let's stop talking and let's start doing. So I just started Emacs Writing Studio and let's open a little demonstration file for this video. I can go to the Emacs Writing Studio GitHub repository that I'm using here for this demo. And on the documents, there's the whole book. And here is orgdemo.org, which demonstrates all sorts of org mode capabilities with some random lorem ipsum text. Now, this text will be exported in a what you see, what you mean uh, philosophy. And I'll explain more about that in the next video about publication. But sometimes you might want to add editorial comments. So, uh, lines of text that will not appear in the final product, but are important for you in the writing process. So, for example, I can start with a hash tag or an octothorpe, as it's formerly known, to do. Let's translate to English. Could be a comment here that is a little to do for me to do later. And this tag is told text will be totally invisible to the end user of this product. Of course, we can also convert existing paragraphs into a comment. Now, this is not the most elegant way of doing this. A structured template allows you to add these commentaries a bit more invisible. So, Control C, Control Comma, and then Capital C, and you'll see the keyboard shortcuts will appear on the top. And now this is a will block a commentary block it starts with a beginning and an end and anything written in this box is not exported now the beauty of this is now let's say this is a complete backstory that uh, you need within your within your novel then that backstory will not appear in the text but also you can then make it go away by hitting tab key when you're either on the top or on the bottom so it doesn't sort of distract you from the writing process, but you can always open up that little box and see what's written in there. The third method is something I created for uh, Emacs Writing Studio using the draw functionality within org mode. And we'll see drawers coming up more and more um, later on, but basically a drawer is just like what you see here, it's a part of text that you can open and close. Drawers are also used to store different properties such as word counts, etc., which we'll talk about later. But the EWS org insert notes drawer function will generate and open a notes drawer right under the current heading. And then you can add your notes and then jump back to where you were. So if I now activate this command, it will open a notes drawer and in here I can add, for example, an action list, do this, that, and the other. And being an action list with Control C, Control C, I can open and close them and so on. To jump back to where I came from, I can activate the mark, Control U, Control Space, and I'm back to where I was. If I want to add a line to this commentary, I can use the keyboard shortcut. So it's Control C, W, N. I add one more thing. And again, Ctrl U, Ctrl Space takes me back to where I was writing without losing any context. What I, what I like about this is that all the sort of action lists are um, right at the heading where you need them. And then you can tick them off one by one. And by the virtue of it being a drawer, we can also open and close it just like the other commentaries. So that, these are three different ways to add editorial notes to a document. In academic writing, citations are extremely important. And alt mode 
uh, comes with a fully equipped citation tool that links beautifully to BibTag and also uh, CETA, which was which were discussed in a previous chapter in a, in, in a previous video. But here's a little demonstration of how to add citations to a document. We're not going to look at how those citations are exported, so what, what citation system we use. That's the topic of the next video, which is about publication. Now we have two different bibliographies. You'll see here that on the top of the line, I've nominated a bibliography, which is the Emacs Writing Studio .bib file. And we can open that right here. And there's a bibliography that is part of the repository. And these are all the items that I've used within EWS. There's also a uh, an overall and generic bibliography, which is stored in the um, EWS BibTab directory file. So in my case, that's documents library. And within documents library, there's a bunch of bibliography files. And then when I run the EWS, oops, EWS BibTag register command, it registers all these bibliographies as part of the um, universal bibliography. So now all these items are available to me. The shortcut to insert a citation is Ctrl C, Ctrl X, and then ampersand. That opens the bibliography. The first time you open it will take a few seconds, but it will be faster after that. Now I can start searching. So I search for Emacs, for example. Here are all the Emacs references. You see that some of those are duplicated, and that's because they appear in the universal bibliography on, for my overall computer, but it also is part of the specific EWS file, but that doesn't create any conflicts. So for example, let's, we got this paper here by Markus Birkenra, who uses Emacs for data science. And the L and the F means that there's a link and there's a file associated with it. The C means that this um, particular item is already cited within this file. So let's choose Birkenra. And uh, now by adding tab, we can add a second one. And that's, for example, Cameron Learning Emacs. Hit enter, and now the citation link is added. You'll see that it is Cameron and Birkenra, and they're both here. We can change the order of these, which is shift and uh, the arrow keys. We stand behind, we stand in there anywhere. We can also add another citation. So now we have three, and we could, for example, uh, move them around a little bit as well. To remove a citation, stand on top of the citation, Ctrl C, Ctrl X, backspace, removes that citation. The last thing to explain with citations is that we can also add a prefix and a suffix. So for example, we have this Stalman paper. Then if I had a meta P, so alt P, then I can add a prefix, for example, C, uh, and then the suffix would be page one, two, three. Now this will be rendered as C Stalman 1981, page 123. Now how that is exactly rendered depends on your citation uh, engine, which will be discussed in the next video, as I said earlier. Last thing that we can do, these are hyperlinks, so we can also jump back into CETA from here. So I hit Ctrl C, Ctrl O on the Stalman link, and now looks for uh, any available uh, attachments, any links, or any denote files that exist, or it asks you to gives you an option to create the denote file for that particular uh, item. So that's the CETA denote package, which was discussed in another video. If no attachment or link is available, it will immediately jump to creating a new note for this entry. So I believe that's the case with Cameron. So it says title learning GNU Emacs, and now it jumps straight into CETA denote, which we will not do. So this is about adding citations to your document and then also being able to access uh, exactly the information you need. So it will be easy to, for example, open the PDF file and then uh, 
duplicate the window and then new, now I can read this particular paper, but I can also write about it on the left hand screen. So a very useful way to manage citations within Emacs. Next, we're going to look at inserting cross references. So these are links to either a heading or an image or a table, which in the final export will be converted to a number or another similar reference. And that works just like citations with an internal link. So let's start. The easiest, most straightforward are links to tables or figures, and they work exactly the same way. So let's quickly add an image, Control U, Control C, Control L. I go to my images folder and I add this, for example, the CETA menu. For images, there's no description. So now we have a link, Control C, Control X. Um, Control C, Alt V shows the image. Cool. I can now add a caption to this image. This is the CETA, CETA screenshot. Okay. What I can also do, I can add a name to this image. And what I normally do, I prepend them with FIG for figure, and I use tab for table and SCC for section and so on. That makes it clear what I'm actually referring to. Uh, then a dash, and let's call this CETA screen. Okay. So now we've given this image a name. If I want to refer to this, for example, refer to, and then I want to say figure, whatever the number might be, Ctrl C, Ctrl L to create a new link. And then I type in here, fig theta screen. No description, hit enter, and there we go. Now let's make this a full screen. Good. If I now click Ctrl C, Ctrl O, then I jump to that image. In the export, it will turn into a fully formatted reference to wh whatever way your um, chosen export format deals with this. This works the same for tables and for images. For headings, it works slightly different. Now, let's say I want to make a full reference to this section here, text formatting. What I could do, Pretty straightforward in alt mode. Um, Ctrl C, Ctrl L, and I just type text formatting. Enter, enter. Now it's got a lower F. So now I have a link, and Ctrl C, Ctrl O takes me to that link. But this doesn't work very well in export. And also, if, for example, there's a slight typo, the, the um, link won't work. Now, what we need to do is the following. First, this heading needs to be given a property. And we can do that with a property draw. Um, and I'm just going to show you the particular use of this property draw. Property draws have a lot of functionality within alt mode, but here's just one example. Ctrl C, Ctrl X, and P for a property draw. And the, you see here, there's lots of different properties uh, available. They're all explained in the alt mode manual, but we want custom ID. Hit enter, and now I say section text format, enter, and now there's a drawer under here. So with a tab key, I can open it up, and you see custom ID is text format. Okay, I can now go up here. Um, for example, further explained in section CL. Now, for headings, I need to start my link with an Octothorpe slash hashtag, bound symbol, whatever, number symbol. And then I need to type the name of the link. Now, unfortunately, there's no um, auto completion to sort of find the existing links. Maybe that's something for a future package. And also, um, this only jumping within the org mode file only works within the same org mode file i can add references here from other files so that don't exist in this particular buffer which is fine for the export the export will pick that up as we show see later but um, this doesn't work we can't jump to it but again ctrl c ctrl o and i'm not junk to text format 
So these are two different ways to add cross-references in your uh, Orkboard document. So now I'm going to look at some little tools that are built into Emacs Writing Studio to make your writing a bit easier. The first one is called Olivetti Mode. So Olivetti Mode is a package sort of inspired on the old typewriter, so the Italian brand Olivetti. Because the screen we have here has quite a few sort of characters and it's a very, um, very long line, it's a very broad screen. So when I activate Olivetti Mode and within EWS I've written a specific function that makes it a little bit more smooth. Um, so Ctrl C, W and then O for Olivetti. What you see now is that the text gets squashed to about 80 characters wide and central centered. So this um, is a very a more relaxing way to, to do some writing and we'll keep that on for now. So that's uh, Olivetti mode. The other thing we can do, this is only one file out of a whole bunch of files that are part of the EWS uh, book. So the EWS project I was working on. Now, if we need to find text within a certain file, there is a fantastic utility called grep, which is part of pretty much every Linux distribution and also lives on uh, Emacs. And I'm sure you can install it uh, on Windows as well. That allows you to very quickly search through the content of a bunch of files and text files in this case. So that is facilitated within Alt mode by the consult grep package. So the consult grep package provides Emacs functionality that then sends a command to grep and then shows it back in Emacs. So they work hand in hand seamlessly. So consult grep, that is uh, on Ctrl C, W, G um, within Emacs Writing Studio. And there's a few things you can do. So again, we see the hashtag here. If I now, for example, type denote, which is the uh, note-taking package that ships with uh, EWS. I see here all the, this is ews.l.el, so that's uh, an elist file, which uh, it's not, but also you see it's in the production chapter and in the ninja chapter ideation. These are all the um, many, many instances where the, the word denote appears within this collection of files in this particular directory. Well, let's say I want to be more specific, I add a space. It means that search for denote and settle constant in the same line. So now we only have 17 uh, hits. And then we can use the arrow key to go through them. Uh, and also you will see when we swap files that there's a preview on the top. So a very quick way of finding information within your uh, files. There's another bit of this syntax. If we do denote, then a hashtag, and then settle constant, this will give you all the files that have the word denote in it, and somewhere in that file settle constant. So not necessarily on the same line. So that gives us uh, 16 different hits. So consult uh, grep is a very useful tool to manage a large project like this. So that's the end of the demonstration for this chapter of Emacs Writing Studio. The actual book contains a lot more information about other tools as well, about a, a dictionary and thesaurus, uh, about some grammar checking and other useful tools for authors. Uh, you can get the Altmode files for the EWS book freely from the GitHub repository. If you'd like to support my work, feel free to purchase a copy from your favorite book retailer. It's available as an ebook and also recently as a paperback. In the next video, I'm going to explain to you how we turn this collection of Altmode files and associated images and bibliography, how we turn that into an ebook or a paperback. So I hope to see you at the next video.